Hello viewers, welcome to today's discussion on radio. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss on the coming of FM radio in India. Now we all have our favorite FM channels. I mean, it's either Radio Mirchi or Red FM or Big FM, or perhaps uh, if you are living in Calcutta, then Friends FM or Amar FM or whatever. So when we are traveling, then the radio plays uh, in the vehicle or maybe it's it plays through our mobiles. And when we are commuting, we, we enjoy the music and the chit chat and the so on. So let's just go back a little in time and see how FM came to India. Now, actually, to begin at the beginning, one major Edwin Armstrong, he had invented the technology of FM transmission. Prior to that, uh, all radio broadcast used to happen on AM, which is amplitude modulation. But uh, this major Armstrong, he had shown that frequency modulation is a much better way of radio transmission because the transmission is much cleaner and uh, the dynamic range of uh, the radio, the, the sound signal is much better. The fidelity to the original sound is much closer and so on. But because of many lobbies, somehow this FM had not uh, got prominence. I mean, it did not, it was not accepted commercially. It took some time for FM to be accepted commercially as a mode of uh, radio transmission. So let's not go into that. But in India, All India Radio had first experimented with FM transmitter way back in the 1970s, particularly Western classical music, which deals with a wide frequency range and a wide dynamic range of sound. And the transmission was found to be really of an excellent quality. But the problem was that ordinary radio or, or transistor, transistor sets which the people had in their homes, those could not receive FM because those did not have that FM receiver built into those radio sets. So people had to make an extra investment in order to enjoy the FM transmission. Uh, transmission. And very few people were re ready to make that investment. And the radio manufacturing companies were also half-hearted in making those radio receiver sets. And so FM transmission was not really picking up. Although technically, All India Radio was transmitting uh, Western classical music in FM. And of course, television transmission, uh, the audio of television transmission has always been FM. So if, if one had an uh, FM transmitter, FM receiver at home, one could easily listen to the audio of the television channels. Anyway, be that as it may, uh, something interesting happened in the 1980s and that was the Supreme Court gave a ruling that the airwaves cannot be monopolized by, by any individual or any organization. And therefore, any Indian organization that is properly equipped and that has the technical know-how can broadcast from Indian soil, which was earlier prohibited by the Indian Telegraph Act, uh, which was passed as uh, way back in 1885. So after the Supreme Court ruling, uh, privatization of broadcast had to come in. Okay. And so that's when government of India said ki those uh, organizations, the media houses that are interested can produce programs for FM transmission. And many organizations jumped into the bandwagon like HMV joined, an organization called Radio Network, then Times of India Group joined, uh, Radio Midday started their operations, and they all started producing very interesting programs, but they didn't broadcast these programs themselves. They gave this program cassettes to All India Radio, and All India Radio broadcast this, these programs from their FM station. So that's how it was going on for several years, and people love these FM programs because these were very different. It was uh, conceived and executed by a very different bunch of people who were not all India radio in-houses. So their thinking was different. The style of uh, talking was more chatty. The music quality, of course, was excellent. And the kind of programs, there was a diversity in the types of programs and the types of topics that were handled. You know, all kinds of topical subjects were brought in for discussion, but discussions were always kept at a more or less lighthearted level and people enjoyed, people loved these programs. So it was going on for quite a few years till suddenly 1998, Government of India stopped all these uh, uh, private FM programs from being telecast. And then there was a furor from the public because public demanded more and more of it. 
and that's when the broadcast bill was passed in the parliament eventually which formalized the fact that uh, all private operators they had to prove of course their technical know-how and they could uh, apply for license if they wanted to uh, broadcast uh, uh, either television pro pro programs or radio programs all right so this was uh, this directive was given out in 1999 and in March 2000, there was an auction for the licensing of FM radio stations, radio channels. And the response from the potential radio operators, it was overwhelming. There was overbidding and the licenses were sold at a very high rate. The regulations was that the license fee to be paid to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, that will be raised by 15% every year. The second regulation was there was total ban on news and current affairs programming. The programming had to be music and other kinds of chats, but nothing topical, nothing, uh, no serious political discussion or any other current affairs discussion. Number three, advertising had to follow the advertiser's code. That, of course, is understandable. That means the limits of decency had to be kept, and then no religious group or no particular community uh, could be slandered. And then a uh, competing brand could not be directly attacked in the advertisement, and so on and so forth. So that was understandable. And the fourth rule was that while a company could own a, any number of stations, each station had to be unique in its operation and unique in its profile. So the results of that was the phase one of privatization of radio. And the phase one results were thus, due to overbidding, the government of India ended up making rupees 3.86 billion in terms of license fees. I mean, this was much, much above their expectation. The highest price for a license in Mumbai was rupees 97.5 million against a reserve price of rupees 12.5 million. And that was by Radio Midday. Ten licenses were sold in Mumbai, and altogether 21 channels in 12 cities became operational. So that's what happened in phase one. Now the problem is that the license fee itself was so high, and there was a 15% hike at the end of every year, that hampered the growth of FM like anything because companies found it very, very difficult to recover the cost. Now, what are the revenue? What is the revenue model? Typically for a radio station, what is the revenue model? First is advertising revenue by selling time slots, either 10 second or 30 second time slots. And the second is subscription. Now, in the case of FM, there was no question of subscription. There was a long time back, Indians had to pay a license for owning a radio set, but that was abolished a long time back. So now there was no question of the subscription. So advertising revenue was the only revenue. Now, FM, because it has a limited reach, national uh, corporations like uh, those who have their products at a national level, they were not that enthusiastic about giving out their advertisements on FM because every FM channel operated only within a city, whereas television had a much bigger reach and a newspaper also had a much bigger reach. So national uh, channels were, national uh, corporates were not that interested and the local entrepreneurs, for them, FM was still slightly expensive, but some of them did come forward to advertise their products on FM. And in fact, the smaller the FM st uh, radio stations in smaller cities, they had to make do with, say, selling their 10 second time slots for as little as 50 rupees or 100 rupees. Whereas in the bigger cities, these 10 second time slots were sold for anything between, say, 400 rupees to 4,000 rupees. Even though they were trying their best and all this, these them were big players, so therefore they had deep pockets, so they could, uh, they could sustain, in spite of losses, they could sustain their stations for a few years. But then they started lobbying with the government of India to change the rules. And in the second phase, actually, the rules were much more relaxed. So because of the lobbying from the private operators, uh, the government of India set up a committee which was headed by Amit Mitra. Amit Mitra, Dr. Amit Mitra, who, who was the chairman of FIKI at that time, he headed the committee. He looked into the matter that what was feasible for uh, uh, FM channel to get advertisement revenues, what was the market for the advertisement revenues, and so on. And then the changes that, uh, that 
at, under his le leadership, the changes that were introduced were as follows. Number one, the license once purchased will be valid for 10 years. So the license will not have to be renewed every year. But every year, 4% of the revenue will be shared with Ministry of Information and Broadcasting or 10% of the license fee, whichever was higher. If 4% of revenue was higher than 4% of revenue, otherwise 10% of license fee had to be shared every year with the government of India, which went and this revenue went to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. Second change was that the license holder cannot outsource more than 50% of its program content. That means say, if I have brought a radio license, I will have to personally produce at least 50% of the programs that will be aired. It's not that I have brought the license and then I, have, I give it to an, a third party to produce the programs and give it to me. It cannot happen like that. And out of uh, the 50% that is outsourced, maximum 25% can be given to a single content provider. That means you have to spread out the content generation. If, if at all you outsource, you have to spread it out among uh, several vendors and not depend on one vendor only. And that too, only 50%, rest 50% has to be in-house production. Then the another very important regulation he brought in was that no linkage between the content provider and an ad agency which means that an ad agency cannot apply for license and cannot run a radio channel because then the ad agency is at a tremendous advantage as compared to the others. It doesn't remain an even playing ground. All right. And then networking allowed only with C and D category cities. That means that supposing I have got a license for an FM station in Calcutta and FM station in Bombay. Now, I cannot do that I create a set of programs for Calcutta and I run the same programs in my Delhi and Bombay channel also. No, the channels have to operate separately, but I can share my uh, content uh, bank, the bank of content, uh, program content with a ra um, radio station which is in a smaller town, say Durgapur or say Bordhuman. With them I can share, but not with any other FM station which is there in a big city. And then foreign direct investment was allowed for radio, but maximum of 20% of foreign direct investment could come in. And 50% uh, of the equity had to be owned by Indians. And only Indians could become CEOs or directors or hold positions of responsibility in a radio channel. Foreigners could not, or people for, with foreign nationality could not do that. So these were the regulations in phase two. And the result, it was a close bidding. It was not an open bidding like the previous time. It was a close bidding and the base level was zero. And it was completed in the year 2006. And by 2009, 248 stations were broadcasting across 91 cities. So thanks to the relaxation of the regulations and for making them more realistic, now FM radio was in for a big launch, not only in the big cities, but also in the smaller towns. And more and more people started listening to FM. But still, FM was not growing uh, as it should have grown because of certain problems. And it was seen that most of the FM channels were, were depending on uh, music, film music, or any other pre-recorded music. They were not going in for original programs. Th there was no diversity of programs that were coming up. And all sorts of such pro problems were visible. And the FM channels were saying that they had to work so hard to pay the license fee that they did not want to spend too much on creating content. So creating content, they kept it at a base minimum level by, you know, just recycling the already uh, popular film songs and so on and so forth. And just by paying the radio jockey a certain amount of money. So they, they, they cut cost in the production side so, so that they could meet up the expectations of the license. I mean, the whatever license uh, or the amount they had to give to the government of India at the end of the year. So that was one complaint that the uh, FM producers or the FM 
FM channels, private FM channels had against the government. And then they said that uh, how else, how can we diversify? We are not allowed to uh, broadcast news and current affairs. So there is there is very little scope for us to do anything other than play pre-recorded music. So that was their complaint. And so there were, even though number of FM channels was increasing, the diversification of programs was not happening. And then started the work for the phase three of the license. In fact, the phase three licensing hasn't happened yet because talks and negoti negotiations are still on. But these changes have come up for the phase three. So what are the changes? Number one, it will again be an open bid, but it will be this now be an e-auction so that there is complete transparency. So everyone welcome the open bid idea because uh, in a close bid, you never know there can be favoritism, who eventually gets the license, you know, there is no transparency. In an open bid, that too on the internet, everything, the entire procedure is totally transparent. So everybody liked that idea. Then once you have a license, it will be valid for 15 years, not just 10 years, but 15 years. So that is also a welcome change. Now for Jammu and Kashmir, for the Northeastern states, and also for Andaman and Nicobar, the annual payment to the government of India, instead of 4% of the gross revenue, it was reduced to 2% of the gross revenue. So that was an advantage for these certain states which needed a support from the government. All right. Then of course, there's all the directors and the key executives had to be Indians, that is understood. And a single entity cannot hold more than 15% of all the channels allotted to the country. That, that was also just as before. The foreign direct investment limit was raised to 26%. For print, it was always 26%. Now for radio also, it was raised to 26%. And license, of course, not transferable, meaning that you get a license and then you pass it on to a third party. That was not allowed. And another very important thing uh, has uh, changed that has taken place is that co-location of transmission equipment is not mandatory. Now, what's the meaning of co-location of transmission equipment? In the early period, in, in the year 2000, in the, during the first phase of bidding, government of India had made it mandatory that there won't be too many FM transmitters in one city. So there will be one transmitter and all the private FM channels will have to share that particular transmitter. Now, that caused a lot of problems because all the private FM channels are each other's competitors. So they did not want to share a particular infrastructure. They found it very difficult to do that. So th then that government understood that. And uh, then they, uh, that's why in the phase three, they have come up with this regulation that co-location of transmission equipment is not mandatory. That means if you want, you can set up your own transmitter. That will mean more expense to you, but it's up to you. You can set up your own transmitter if you want. So these are some of the important changes that have come up in phase three. But the phase three licensing pro process hasn't yet happened because some of the discussions are still on. But it is expected that phase three will bring in a, a number of uh, good changes and diversity of programs will also happen. Because uh, the other thing that the government have, has allowed is that um, All India Radio News can be relayed by the private FM stations. That means the private FM stations cannot create their own news, but they can relay the All India Radio news. The other thing they have been allowed to do is exam result, announcing of exam result, traffic updates, weathered reports, news on local festivals, cultural events, these can be broadcast and discussed. So that means the thrust is on to develop the local community, to bring the local community into folds of the radio, and so therefore lay more emphasis on local developments, local events, and so on. And this will help the uh, private FM channels to attract the local advertisers. Because if the private FM channel is proactive in going, reaching out to the local community, obviously the advertisers also will be more attracted. So it is expected that uh, there will be, after this phase three of licensing, radio will actually uh, take a big, big leap. So that is expected. And um, I will just read out some of the statistics for you. As I had said that um, 
advertising uh, revenue for every 10 seconds. For a big city, it is rupees 400 to rupees 1000. For a small town, it can be as small as rupees 100 or rupees 50. Okay, so that is very uh, really a minuscule amount. Programming cost per hour works out to be rupees 15,000. Okay, it's not a small amount, rupees 15,000. And at the moment, only Radio Mirchi has been making consistent profit. Radio Mirchi is a Times of India radio channel. So Radio Mirchi has been making consistent profit. And some of the other big radio stations like Big FM and Red FM, they have just about broken even in the past few years. After making a loss in the first few years, they have begun to uh, break even. So uh, this is the present scenario. And the big picture is like this, that at the moment, there are 242 private FM stations and 326 FM stations run by All India Radio. Because All India Radio also has three or four FM stations operating from each city. Okay, so these are the total FM stations. Still, government FM stations are more than the private FM stations. And the total revenue that all the FM stations put together that they earn is rupees 1,460 crores, which is much smaller compared to the print media as well as the television media. Now, this is a source from a very reliable source from the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. So, we have to uh, reason to take this particular data seriously. And this is the chart of the number of uh, FM stations in India. It's a little dated. It's a March 2011 chart. But still, it shows that which city has how many FM stations and which uh, company owns how many FM stations. It's clearly so shown here. And AdLab Films, which is actually a Reliance Group company now, that has a total of 45 FM stations all over the country. So they are the market leaders at the moment, AdLab Films. And this Entertainment Network India has 25 FM stations. It is a uh, not a close second, but a very far uh, back uh, second. And then South Asia FM has 23 FM stations. So it's like that. So therefore, the point is that for a country like India, radio is a very, very important and significant uh, medium of communication because there are so many people who still cannot read and write enough, well enough to read the newspaper, but they can enjoy radio programs. And radio sets are quite cheap. Nowadays, everybody can listen to radio even on a simple mobile. Just by downloading a particular radio app, you can enjoy radio even on your mobile phone. So radio, listening to radio, those facilities are there, but unless and until the FM stations proliferate and more and more FM stations open up even in the smaller towns and uh, uh, villages, etc., the FM will not proliferate into the entire country and the diversity of programs, uh, we will not see the diversity of programs. So that is the thing. Government also has to come forward and reduce the license fee and give other kind of support to the FM stations. The FM stations have to gear up and become more competitive. But still, that day is awaited uh, when FM will, or rather radio as an industry, will actually give a tough competition to print and television. Right now, it is nowhere near, in terms of revenue earning and in terms of penetration, radio is nowhere near print and uh, television, if we consider just the private FM. But that day is awaited. Hopefully, after the phase three of licensing, uh, it, the situation will improve and FM radio will really take off in India. Thank you very much.